Hey guys, it's Cece, and today I am here to talk about some historical fantasy on my TBR. What do you all think of my look? I decided to go a little whimsical for historical fantasy, give you some vibes. Um, I'm a lesbian, so I had multiple vests to choose from already. There are some things that come in handy. <laughs> and one of those things is being gay enough that you accumulate vests. And button downs. <laughs> so hi, yeah, I'm here to talk about historical fantasy, some historical fantasy on my personal TBR, because it happens to be a genre I'm particularly fond of. And honestly, looking at my TBR, historical fantasy tends to be a pretty big factor on that TBR. So I am here to give you my top 10 historical fantasy books that are on my personal TBR. Historical fantasy is kind of a nebulous term. Some people have different definitions for it than others. All of these books are either set in like real time periods and real places or they're set in places inspired by historical events and settings and all of them have a fantastical element to them. So historical fantasy top 10 at TBR. I want to say thank you so much to Disney Books for sponsoring this video. And in that vein, I wanted to start out this list, 10 historical fantasy books, with a brand new title. And that is Rebel Rose by Emma Terrio. So this is actually the first book in a series, the Queen's Council series, which you can see there on the cover. And the Queen's Council series is a YA historical fantasy series that reimagines Disney princesses as young rulers just starting to come into power. And there is a mysterious force that weaves all of their stories together. So this book is following Belle. Rebel Rose is set in 1789 in France, in a France that is on the brink of revolution. It's about a young Belle who is a new queen and has to deal with forces that she really wasn't expecting to deal with. Belle is and always has been my favorite Disney princess. I adore Belle, and so I have been so excited to read this reimagined version of Belle being a young queen and dealing with this magical force that binds her story together with other princesses that are going to appear in this series. Seriously, it sounds amazing. It's out now. Definitely check it out. Thank you to Disney Book Group for sending me this book and for sponsoring this video. I hope that you check out Rebel Rose. So next up on this list, next up on my historical fantasy TBR, I want to talk about These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Oh, I am so excited to read this. My copy of this book hasn't arrived yet as of filming this video, but I'm crossing my fingers that it will be here soon. <laughs> These Violent Delights is set in 1926 in Shanghai, and it is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. It's set in this world of rival gangs, tensions are high, things are starting to come apart at the seams, and there is a monster in the river. This is gonna be like a dark fantasy. It's about two rivals from rival families who are forced to work together, otherwise maybe there won't be anything left for either of their families to rule because something is killing things. One of my most hyped releases of the year. I can't wait to read it. Next, I want to mention a chunkier adult fantasy, and that is The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the beginning of a trilogy, and it is set in 18th century Cairo. This is about a con woman who accidentally summoned summons a Jin warrior. And there's also something here about a journey to a legendary city of brass, aka the title. I have heard nothing but incredible things about all three books in this series, and I happened to pick this up a couple of months ago. It's definitely, definitely on my top 10 list, obviously because I'm talking about it, my top 10 historical fantasy books that I want to read. Next up, I want to mention a sequel. This is another adult release, and that is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. I read The Poppy War in May, and it is superb on a level I can't even tell you. As far as time periods, this is set in an alternate fantasy world, but it is heavily inspired by a specific moment in history, and that is the Second Sino-Japanese War. The Poppy War follows this girl named Rin, who is poor. She is a war orphan at the very edge of the outermost province of her world, and she studies hard, to pass an impossible test and does an incredible job and ends up going to a school where she learns about battle and history and possibly magic. It's dark. It's so dark. It's one of the darkest books that I've ever read and I am dying to get into the sequel, The Dragon Republic, which I've heard is just amazing, and The Burning God, which is the third book, which I've also heard is amazing. I'm just fascinated by 
books about dark, complex women who make bad decisions, and that's, that's the poppy war. That's everything, but it's also, like, it's so cathartic and heartbreaking. It's so good. I can't wait to read the sequel. Next up, I wanted to talk about The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chakshi. This is the Alcrate exclusive edition, I believe, if you're curious why my edition looks like this. It's an Alcrate edition. This is set in France in 1889, and supposedly there is, like, a crime element. There are also a variety of narrators. Basically, there's this artifact that needs to be tracked down, so there has to be a team that's going to track this artifact down. I love a good story about, like, a group of people coming together and accomplishing a task, especially if that task is a crime. You know, I just live for it. I was raised on con and heist movies, and so any excuse to read a book about that I'm there. I've heard great things about the Gilded Wolves, and there is also a sequel, I believe it's just a duology, Silvered Serpents? Is that the name of the second book? I believe it is. I'm very, very eager to read this. Also have a little bit of horror in here. It is historical fantasy! It's just also horror. So, I hope that's okay with you. <laughs> because I wanted to talk about Blood Countess by Lana Popovich. <laughs> this is set in 16th century Hungary. It follows this woman who works for Elizabeth Bathory, who was also known as the Blood Countess, or uh, she was also known as the inspiration for Dracula. So this is about a girl named Anna who starts as a scullery maid, um, and then Elizabeth Bathory takes a liking to her. She moves up very quickly within the family and eventually becomes Elizabeth's lover and then starts to figure out more and more the dark, creepy, horrible stuff that's going on behind the scenes. <laughs> and this is gay. You know I will read anything gay. This was on my TBR to read during the Fortnite Frights readathon. It didn't happen so it's still at the top of my list. Moving on, I want to talk about an adult title, and that is The Bird King by G. Willow Wilson. This is a book set in 1491 during the Spanish Inquisition. This follows a woman who is one of the only remaining, or is the only remaining concubine to the Sultan, and she also has a best friend who is the palace map maker, but he has a secret Basically, he can draw maps of places he's never been and kind of bend the shape of reality to his whims. So I've been very curious about this. This is a much earlier time period than I normally read about. I'm sure you can tell that my tastes tend to be more current. <laughs> you know, my historical fiction of choice is uh, 20th century, so I'm sorry if some of these are more modern in your historical fantasy than you're accustomed to. It tends to just be my preference. So, 1491. I... We're going back a ways. That's what I'm saying. But I still really want to read this. <laughs> Next, I want to talk about The Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in Water by Zen Cho. And I wanted to talk about this first of all because it is very high on my TBR. I really, I just really want to read it. But also, I wanted to note that this is on here for another reason. This book is a wuxia fantasy. Wuxia is a subgenre. It's a genre of Chinese fiction that tends to follow ancient warriors, usually who have some kind of enhanced ability within the martial arts. And wuxia fantasy is listed as one of the things under historical fantasy. It's a specific subheading in the Wikipedia about historical fantasy, so I really wanted to make sure it was on here. This is a super short novella, another reason it's on my list. You know I love a novella. And it is a found family wuxia fantasy. It's about a bandit who walks into a coffee shop and everything goes downhill from there. I have heard great things about this. I think it has a gorgeous cover. I think it has a great concept. Basically, would like to read it. And it is set in a pre-industrial Malaysian inspired world. So I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Also good to know. Second to last, I have another horror book that I wanted to talk about, but it is still historical fantasy, I promise. It's just also horror. And that is Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. This is uh, an adult book. It is a novella. It's pretty short but it is set in the 1920s in Georgia, which is in the American South. On the back, it actually says in 1915, but that's when Birth of a Nation happened, so I'm not sure if the book is set, like, immediately after that or if there's a time jump. I just know that I read in a couple of reviews that it was 1920s, but maybe I'm wrong. 
basically this is about demonic the demonic kkk like the kkk if they were demons inhabited by demons i mean if <laughs> i mean that's a <laughs> it's doing a lot of heavy lifting there i really like peter jelly clark i love his um alternate cairo fantasy series it's like fantasy universe basically i read the haunting of tramcar 015 which is written within that and there are a few others as well ring shout you know i was in it for demonic kkk but then you know it's peter jelly clark on top of all of that it's gonna be fan Fantastic. And the final book that I wanted to mention as part of my top 10, the 10th book on this list is Witchmark by C.L. Polk. This is set in a fantasy world that is very reminiscent of Edwardian England. So it's not Edwardian England, but it's set in a world like it. You understand. You, you understood what I meant the first time. Witchmark follows a character who is a witch who ran away from his family. Then there is this fatally poisoned patient, and somehow our main character, his magical abilities are revealed in some way, and he has to go on an investigation so he can learn more about that event. Uh, this is also super gay. The sequel is about gay ladies. I live for the aesthetic, and for the queer rep. That's basically my whole vibe. So I am very excited to get to Witchmark. I've heard it's great. And I've heard that the sequel is great too. Just saying. I've heard all these books are great. That's why they are on my top 10 list of books that I want to read that are historical fantasy. All right, everybody, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed hearing more about my top 10 historical fantasy books that I would like to read soon. Please tell me about some historical fantasy that you have on your TBR, or tell me about your favorite historical fantasy. I can tell you that a few of my favorite historical fantasy books include Amberlo by Laura Elena Donnelly, great introduction to a series. The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiefvater. The Poppy War, obviously I talked about it already, it's fantastic. There's The Night Circus, which I know is a standby fave, and a book called Kindred by Octavia Butler. Please check it out if you haven't already. And just a reminder before you go that Rebel Rose is in stores now. You can learn more about this book and the Queen's Council series if you check out the link in the description down below. Clicking it would be just amazing. It would mean the absolute world to me if everyone will go ahead and click that link, learn more about Rebel Rose. Other than that, I just want to say thank you all so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I can't wait to read your comments, your answers, find some new books to add to my TBR. Yeah, thank you. I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!